what if you were a merchant of a particular type of cloth perhaps some um, a special silk now you make a name for yourself as the premium dealer of that cloth all over even your identity becomes synonymous with that cloth and then one day something unbelievable happens there's an international ban on all other cloth material except yours but turns out not only do you fail to sell cloth in this gifted phase but a completely unknown competitor ends up owning the entire market in minutes now replace the merchant with skype cloth with video calls ban with pandemic and unknown competitor with zoom you know the subject i'm talking about don't you skype turned from one of the most exciting companies of the last decade into a full on meme in 2020 in today's video i'll tell you the real story about skype's downfall and probably answer the question was it zoom that really killed skype Skype was founded in 2003 by Yanis Fries and Niklas Zenstrom to provide free internet calls. Its initial name was Skype Peer to Peer, then reduced to Skyper and finally Skype. Remember recharge coupons and landline bills? Well, the idea of free calls clicked instantly with audiences as phone calls were chargeable back in those days. eBay then bought Skype in 2005 to add free calls to their services, which did not really work out well. and in early 2006 Skype achieved what would become their identity forever free video calls consumers were enchanted as the concept of live video calls was only seen in sci-fi movies until then by mid 2016 Skype was recognized as the fastest growing internet community and it had over 115 million customers Skype had already become a verb in conversations such as I'll Skype you which meant I'm going to video call you Silicon Valley veterans Josh Silverman became CEO of Skype in 2008 and started focusing on high quality video video calls for phones he oversaw the creation of an iphone app which was by the way a huge hit getting a million downloads in just 2 days in 2009 skype grew at an astonishing rate of about 380k users a day and ended up clocking 740 million dollars in revenue things were looking really good for skype until microsoft happened In 2011, Microsoft bought Skype at a staggering valuation of 8.5 billion dollars. And this is where the beginning of the end started. Not pointing any fingers at Microsoft, but this collaboration is something like a bad marriage between two very good people. Microsoft added Skype on multiple of its devices such as PC and Xbox. Skype couldn't function properly on several of these platforms as it wasn't built for such complicated usage. This resulted in bad experiences and dissatisfied customers for years. Secondly, this was the time when WhatsApp and Snapchat were getting popular. So, Microsoft redesigned Skype to compete in that space for years. Features like emojis and stickers were added to Skype, but nothing significant was done to improve the video calling experience itself. Skype's USP was ignored for years to make it something that it was just not meant to be. Customers disapproved of these changes to Skype. The app's rating fell from 3.5 to 1.5 on the App Store, but Microsoft kept redesigning it as a social media alternative instead of going back to what made it work in the first place, simple video calls. Instead of engaging in course correction for Skype, Microsoft announced Teams in 2016 as their primary video conferencing platform. Skype was allowed to run in the background with very limited attention. Microsoft's treatment made Skype unable to cash in on the greatest opportunity it could have ever had. Skype was pioneering video calls 15 years before video calls became the only way to connect in 2020. In public memory, Zoom will always be thought of as the platform that killed Skype. But in reality, it was Microsoft that killed it by trying to make it something that it was not. Zoom was just doing what it started out to do, seamless video calls. Unlike Skype, dozens of people can appear on a Zoom screen. Inviting people to chat on Zoom is easier because users need only an email id to join not a full blown account zoom constantly made itself easier and more efficient to use that being said zoom wasn't an overnight success zoom was launched when skype already had 100 million users they just stuck to their vision and it gloriously paid off 
Zoom's daily meeting participant count grew during the pandemic from 10 million to about 350 million. For months, it remained the number one app on all app stores. The Skype story will likely go down in history not as a case study, but more like a cautionary tale on how acquisitions can turn sour. So when was the last time you used Skype and what's your take on how it screwed up? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this video and check out other fascinating stories on Stoas business channel. Also, please join our Telegram group to stay updated with all the future uploads from the link in the description. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.